I have a problem and it's a little hard to explain. I've been playing a ton of Fallout 3 on the Retro Pocket Mini and Pocket 5. Obviously this is New Vegas, but our story starts with Fallout 3. Whenever I'd run Fallout 3 on the Retro Pocket 5 or Pocket Mini, I'd have a unique screen tearing, staticky effect that would happen on screen constantly, especially when I was looking around left or right. And this only happens on devices using the Snapdragon 865 processor, and enabling VSync doesn't fix it. In fact, none of the game settings or win later drivers fix that screen tearing issue without a huge performance drop. So I've always had the opinion of, yeah, it's very playable, but it's not a great experience. Then I recently had the urge to play New Vegas. So I tried to install it and it stalled for hours until the device died. For me, this was the final straw. I've only ever wanted one thing in life and that's to play Fallout New Vegas or three on my Retro Pocket 5 without screen tearing if possible, thank you. So I figured it out. From the help of too many Reddit threads, I've got Fallout New Vegas running on the Retro Pocket 5 at a playable frame rate without screen tearing. And this also works for Fallout 3 and the frame rate is even better. Winlater is magical and it's a must have for any powerful device with a Snapdragon processor. Fallout New Vegas on Android feels like some 2011 clickbait, but we're living in it folks. Also, this should fix any screen tearing you might have in Oblivion too. So if you want to learn how to play that, check out this tutorial I made on it. Just start the video after we're done setting up the Winlater container. You can click the card in the top right or find a link in the description. For this quest, your required inventory is the following. A Retroid Pocket 5, Pocket Mini, or any Android device with a Snapdragon 865 processor. You can do this on more powerful devices too, but we're specifically trying to solve the problem with these ones. Next, you'll need Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3 on GOG. Good Old Games is a DRM free store that gives you offline installers for your games. This is essential for letting us install the game inside of Winlater since Steam doesn't work in there. And you'll need 20 gigs of free storage, enough to store our game installer and our installed game. And optionally, a micro SD card. I like the SanDisk 256 gigabyte A2 micro SD card because the price to performance is excellent and you'll never really have any bottlenecks at that speed. I'll have a link to pick one of these up in the description, but you can also follow the same steps with just your internal storage. If you do it with your internal storage, just skip step five where we add our SD card inside of Winlater. Step number one, install CX File Explorer. Other file explorers should work too, but CX lets us see our complete folder path and we'll need that in a later step. So inside our file explorer app, let's go to SD card and make a new folder called Windows. To make a folder, tap the three dots at the top right, tap new and then tap folder. Inside of Windows, make a folder called drives and within drives, we're gonna make a folder called G. That F drive has my existing files, but G is gonna be the one that we're gonna use in this tutorial. Inside of G, we're gonna make two folders, one called downloads and the other called games. Now go back into your web browser and go to GOG.com and sign in. Then it should take you to your games library. Scroll down until you see Fallout New Vegas or Fallout 3. Again, for this tutorial, we're gonna use Fallout New Vegas. So tap on that, scroll down until you see download offline backup game installers. Tap that drop down and you should see a list of files. We're gonna download these files to our micro SD card. So one by one, we're gonna download and go to our SD card. The total download size is gonna be around eight gigabytes. So this might take a little bit depending on your internet speed. So if you'd rather do this on your computer and then transfer them to your SD card, it might be faster. We're doing it all on our device for accessibility reasons. It took a little over 30 minutes to download on the Retroid Pocket 5 with gigabit internet. So if you have access to a computer, you might wanna download the files there and then transfer the files to your device. But I wanted to show that you could do this all on your device if you don't have access to a computer. So let's go back into CX File Explorer and then go to your SD card download folder. So once your files have downloaded, they should look like this. We have our four files that have Fallout New Vegas in the name. Tap the check boxes on the right side and then tap move. We're gonna go back into our SD card, scroll down, tap Windows, Drives, G, Downloads. Now hit paste. Now you'll see our four Fallout New Vegas files are in our Windows Downloads folder. Now we're gonna download Winlater. If you don't have Winlater yet, go into your web browser and type winlater.org. 
then go to the download tab and it'll take you to a GitHub page. Scroll down and download the most recent APK. Now let's go ahead and install that. So tap into your downloads, tap the APK. For me, it said update. For you, it should say install. Now hit open and it should be installing your system files. This will only take a few seconds. Now I already have a container made, but we're gonna make a fresh one for this tutorial. So tap the plus in the top right, then tap the container name to rename it. For the tutorial, we're gonna call ours Fallout, but you can title yours games or whatever you wanna call it. You can install all kinds of different games in there, not just Fallout. We're gonna leave everything on the first page default. And then we're gonna go over to drives and we're gonna tap add. Change the letter to G for games and then go back into CX File Explorer. Starting at the root, go into your SD card, Windows, Drives, and then tap and hold on G. Go to More, and then hit Properties. You're gonna see a path there. Tap and hold on the path, and it should select it. Then tap Copy. Now go back into WinLater, and tap on your target path. You should see a little paste icon in the middle. Tap on that, and then tap Done. Now we've mapped our micro SD card to a path within Windows, so Windows will be able to see what files we have downloaded. Over in the Advanced tab, set your Box64 preset to Intermediate. This will make sure that when you reach the open world, the game doesn't freeze or crash. I was running into a problem with every other preset, where on the outside of the first town, the game would start to load in the rest of the world, and then it would freeze. And this happened to me four times, so I tried out the Intermediate preset, and that seemed to work. I played for over an hour with this preset, and had no freezing or crashing. Now we're going to change one more thing. Go into Environment Variables. And then at the bottom, we're gonna add two variables. It should take about a minute to type everything in. For the name, it's gonna be all caps. Type exactly what's on screen here. Mesa underscore VK underscore WSI underscore present underscore mode. Hit next. And now lowercase type immediate. Make sure there's no space afterwards. Hit okay. Now we're gonna add the second variable. Again, type exactly what's on screen here. Mesa underscore VK underscore WSI underscore debug. Then hit next. Now in lowercase type SW. Now hit done. I hit okay. And you'll see at the bottom we have our two added variables. And I wanna give a shout out to Reddit user XBMO dev for finding these out. This is what fixes the screen tearing issue inside our WinLater games. And now we're all done, so hit the check at the bottom right and it'll create the container. There's one more optional step before launching our container and that will be changing our controller style to Xbox. This will change our controls to the Xbox layout with A at the bottom and Y on the top. It should make the game controls much more familiar for you. But if you wanna play with the Nintendo layout, you can do that too. Just keep in mind you can't change the controller layout while you have a WinLater container open. So if you want to change back to Nintendo layout, you'll have to close your container and then drop down and change your controller style to retro and then relaunch the container. I'm going to keep mine on Xbox though because it's more familiar for me. Now let's go ahead and launch our Fallout container. To do this, tap the triangle play button next to the three dots. Here we are inside of Windows and immediately the file explorer will launch. The WinLater cursor moves like a trackpad, so tap and hold on the screen and then double tap on G, then go to Downloads. At the bottom, you're going to see an orange icon with Setup Fallout New Vegas next to it. Tap once to select and then double tap to launch it. Let's hit OK for English and we'll see our game installer pop up. Before we do anything, go down to Options and we're going to change the install path. Hit Browse. And then next to G, hit that plus icon. Tap games, and then OK. I would do one more thing before we install. We read the EULA, right? Everybody reads that EULA. Take your time. Don't be, don't be shy. We just go ahead and read all that. And then we check it because we read it. Now we install. This is going to take a little bit of time, but keep it close by because at one point, you're going to see the installer is going to stall out. That's when we're gonna jump back in and terminate a process to allow it to finish installing. But for now, you can just let it do its thing. All right, so that took about 15 minutes and you'll see here, 
we see please wait installing .NET 4.0. This will not finish unless we do the next step. So go down to start, system tools, task manager. Go over to processes, tap on that, and you should see a .NET process. Tap on that, end process, yes. You'll get this error, tap OK. Now we can close out of that. And now you can see it moved on to installing DirectX 9. So let it finish installing and then we can launch New Vegas. After two minutes, we're done installing. So now we can launch New Vegas. Tap launch at the bottom and we'll see our game pop up. So you'll immediately notice it's not working. This is because the game is still loading up for the first time. So give it a minute and you'll see a little pop up with recommended graphic settings. If you don't see this pop up within a minute, try tapping the Fallout New Vegas in the taskbar at the bottom and see if that brings up the pop up. It says it recommends high quality. We're going to change that. Go into your options and hit low. Now go into advance. I'm going to change the texture quality to low. And then we're going to bump up the actor fade to eight and the object fade to six. This will let us see the enemies from further away to make sure that they don't start attacking us before we can even see them. Now hit close. Okay. And then click play to launch Fallout New Vegas. And by the way, when you're done playing, you can just swipe from the left side two times and this quick menu should come up. Scroll down to the bottom and then hit exit. Now let's wrap it up. And that's it. Now we can play Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, or any other win later compatible game on our Retroid Pocket 5 or Pocket Mini, or any device with a Snapdragon 865, and you won't have that weird staticky screen tearing issue. I know it took some time and it was a little bit technical, but it's so cool to be able to run New Vegas and all of these other generation games on an Android device. Thanks for watching this tutorial. If this video was helpful, please drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. And comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for other videos. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!